guys, what's going on? Botsy Chan here, back at you with another decklist video on TCGO. And today we are looking at Turbo Darkrai post Guardians Rising. Um, now, Turbo Darkrai, well, has always been a strong deck. It didn't really get a whole lot of new tools added to it to make it better, um, with the exception of Tapu Lele. But it also got hit pretty hard because of things like Field Blower, which discards your tools in stadiums now that may not seem too bad but with this the tools that turbo dark was used to playing like fighting fury belt and exp share both which are very passive tool cards especially exp share because kind of just you kind of put it down and wait for your opponent to knock out a pokemon so you can move the energy off to another dark cry and fighting fury belt well, yes it is a very offensive tool card its main benefit was the extra hp which while it was nice, um, it's not as great anymore because of just Field Blower exists. So we have replaced some cards here. I will go over the cards we replaced right now. Um, so we dropped both Fighting Fury Belts and Choice Bands, and um, Fighting Fury Belts and EXP shares for two copies of Choice Band, which is pretty much like the single best tool card in the standard rotation right now. Um, this lets you do 30 more damage to your opponent's active e Pokemon EX or, or active Pokemon EX. So, this basically acts as a, a dark energy and a half for Turbo Dark Cry. While the extra HP is nice, um, you can hold a choice band, you can hold it in your hand so you, you want to attack and then use it to uh, get that extra damage off. And then your opponent then has to respond with a field blower, which they might have blown on a stadium, such as Silent Lab, which we play two of, or Parallel City, which we play one of, because both of them are designed to disrupt your opponent and make them want to blow that early field blower. Um, so playing around field blower is a must in this deck I think now because you don't want your choice bands discarded you rather have them discard your stadiums which well it's always been possible to get rid of stadiums by playing your own stadium and having them waste a field blower is really amazing thing on that because most people are only playing one I personally think that a one or two is a ver is what you need in the deck nowadays every deck needs at least one or two field blowers but with the prevalence of decidueye vile plume I definitely think maybe one's a better route to go and especially with how much this Sigilite Valkyrie was played, you definitely need to be playing a Hex Maniac as well. So we also, so that's two of the four cards we dropped. The other two cards we added was one copy of Field Blower, just to bump our, our opponent's um, choice bands and stadiums. Um, if we can't play our own stadium, we can use the Field Blower to bump off stadium. Also, we can punish them by bumping off things like Floatstone that are still being played. Things like Choice Bands, Fighting Fury Belts, uh, against Mega Decks, bumping off their Spirit Links before they make it evolve to really slow them down. We also play one Tapu Lele GX, which in this deck is pretty good because one, the Wonder Tag ability is amazing. It's you get to search your deck for a support card and add it to your hand. And then Energy Drive, since it's a double, double colors attack, and we are playing for Max Elixir, it's actually not a bad um, holder of Dark Energy for Dark Crash attack. Plus, uh, doing 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon is amazing. Unfortunately, it does not hit for weakness. But if it did, it would just make Mega Mewtwo way too good. But going into the deck list, for those of you who have never seen Turbo Dark Cry, we play four copies of Dark Cry EX from Breakpoint. Uh, this is the one with the Dark Pulse Attack, which for double colorless does 20 more damage for each Dark Energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So if you have two Dark Energy on your Dark Cry, it will do 60. If you have four Dark Energy on your bench plus the two on Dark Cry, that will do 20, 40, 60. When I say four. So 80, 120, 140, 160. 160 damage. I had a choice band in that is 170. And believe it or not, having four extra dark energy on the board is not hard to do in this deck. We then play two Shaman EXs for the draw support. Um, I have considered, I think this deck benefits too much from drawing more cards to play two Tapu Leles over uh, two Shamans. Um, a lot of people have started to play two Tapu Leles and one Shaman. But this deck requires is so reliant on having items and drawing to the deck quickly to get those dark energies out that I think Shaman is overall better in this deck. We two, play two copies of Oblivion Wing Yveltal. This card has been reprinted in several sets, so whichever artwork you like, use it. But we are using it for the Oblivion Wing attack. Um, lets you it does 30 damage and lets you attach one dark energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. This is just in case we have to discard energy or a dark cry gets knocked out holding energy, we can recycle those energies. We have one copy of Hoopa EX, which lets us search out our dark cries and our shamans. And then one Tapu Lele to grab that supporter that we desperately need. 
moving on into the items we play one copy of enhanced hammer which is really nice because of how many decks run special energy enhanced hammer is really nice to hit things like double colors off of decidui or double colors off uh, tauros or double colors off of evolution or even a double colors off a of drampa which i've started to see a lot more of um double colors is really the only special energy really being played right now so that's what you pretty much are playing the enhanced hammer for um two copies of the escape rope just to um get a dark Christ in and out of the active in case one is damaged you can escape rope out and you can put a fresh dark cry in the active thus forcing your opponent to have a lysander to get that to get at that dark cry that's sitting on the bench that have damage on it uh one copy of field blower to discard opponent's tools and stadiums four copies of max elixir to uh, accelerate energy onto our dark cries one copy of switch uh just another switching card to switch in and out of the active uh also n no escape rope and switch can both be used Let's say you have one Dark Cry in the active with a only one Dark Energy, but you hit two Max Elixirs. Um, you can use both Switch and Escape Rope to get that Dark Cry that's loaded on into your active and start swinging. We play four copies of Trange Mill for maximum consistency. Four copies of Ultra Ball to grab things like Shaman and Hoopa and Lele. Four copies of VS Seeker uh, because it's VS Seeker. One copy of Parallel City. Now, depending upon what situation you're in, it's going to be dependent upon what you play, how you play Parallel City. I guess something like Lapras, you're going to want to play to where it limits your own bench, so that way they do less damage to you, because Lapras tends to not play a whole lot of Pokemon. Also, you can play it to where it limits your bench to discard Shamans and Hoopas, so your opponent can't take any easy prices off of you. Um, you want to play it to where it limits your opponent's bench, you're playing it to like Volcanion, because that. Um, you can try to cut off one of their hoop, uh, one of their volcanians off the bench, so they cannot steam up for additional time. Against things like Mega Ray and Mega Gardevoir, this really hurts their damage output. We play two copies of Silent Lab, which we will, which we will play after we have used all of our basic Pokemon abilities, which would be Shaman Hoopa and Tapu Lele. Um, this is really good at slowing down your opponent. It cuts off their Shamans, cuts off their Hoopas, their Tapu Leles, cuts off Tapu Coco. Um, any basic with an ability cuts it off. We also play one copy of Hex Maniac. This is mostly for the Decidueye matchup against things like Mega Ray and Mega Gardevoir. If you first turn Hex Maniac, it really cuts off their explosive start. As well as any deck with annoying abilities such as maybe Slow Galeo, that starts seeing play. Um, mostly this cuts off, this is mostly in here for the Decidueye matchup. Top of the Hex Maniac, start playing your items. And then also against things like Volcanion can be really useful against because it cuts off their steam ups. And then also cut main thing is though cutting off shamans and top leles and hoopas. Um, two copies of Lysander nowadays is a must in every deck, I feel like, just with how much Disage White Plume is played. Being able to Lysander stall them out is a really great tool to have available to you. Uh, three copies to end for draw, support, and consistency. Uh, one copy of Olympia just as a non item sort of switching card. Four copies of Professor Sigmore because it is the single best draw support that we currently have in the game. And then one copy of Team Flare Grunt just to discard energy off our opponent's active Pokemon. Um, having some form of energy removal in supporter and item form I think is a really good idea to have in every deck. Just because of how much um, energy hate is running around. Um, being able to respond to energy hate with our own energy hate to slow down the game. Um, slow down our opponent's game plan is really useful. As well as preemptively using this. Um, against certain decks, like for example, if a Lapras has two energy on it and you and they, you're, you're filling a hole in a third, you play Team Flare Grunt, make them go down to one energy, they have to take another turn to get that active Lapras with another energy on it, or play some other, or do pull off some kind of energy switch shenanigans. Um, two copies of Choice Band, which I feel like is the single best tool card that we currently have available to us, um, doing build with a, it being a heavy EX and GX format. Be able to do 30 extra damage to your opponent's active EX and GX is really amazing in this deck. Uh, it acts as a dark energy and a half and with the case of Dark Cry. And we play 12 copies of basic dark energy to always make sure we hit those max elixirs. Now let's get some games in. Um, overall, I feel like Turbo Dark has probably gained the least out of a lot of decks, but also it hasn't really been hurt that much. Losing EXP, uh, not being able to play EXP share definitely hurts but it doesn't completely gimp the deck, as well as losing things like Fighting Fairy Belt, which just made the deck made, made it more durable, but cho Choice Band makes it more explosive. So let's see what we get here. Now I didn't look at his typing, but I do see his deck box is Lightning. 
So, this could be, um, ooh, we mulligan, that's bad. This could be Tapu Koko, or, oh, Zeb Striker and Raichu. Now, this is the kind of deck I wanted to explore, um, because of people are anticipating Mega Ray to make a comeback now. Um, now that we have things like, um, Field Blower, we have things like Tapu Lele, people are thinking that maybe Mega Ray might make a comeback, since we make a Gardevoir. But Zeb Striker has really been the Mega Ray, the Mega Ray counter has really been lightning, because it does so much extra damage. Uh, we start with a Shaman, which is really bad, um, with no draw support in our hand currently. And our opponent is going to be flipping over a Pikachu. Um, I think we're going to drop a Dark Energy onto Shaman and Silent Lab and pass. That's really the only thing we can do. This is going to stop him from playing any kind of Shaman if he plays Shaman or any kind of other search card from a, po from a basic Pokemon. He is going to Nest Buff or some kind of evolution, I think. Uh, he grabs a Blitzel. Now, unfortunately, our biggest weakness in this deck is that we, our Shamans are weak to Lightning, so he would only have to have three Pokemon on his bench to Circle Circuit and KO with Raichu. Uh, he is he more than one shots us with his Striker. Um, our Team Flare Gun and our Enhanced Hammer are definitely going to be a big part of how we win this game by just making and taking off his energy. Um, the Blitz on the Zeb Striker, Blitz on the Pikachu, tell me that he might only play four copies of DCE in his deck. Uh, we do get a Parallel City. Which really does not help us. Um, I don't really want to play it either. I'd rather play it when he has to discard something. Um, because if he hits a double colors and the Raichu and another Pokemon, we are knocked out. Um, and Parallel City does not prevent that at all. Um, this is just a case of really bad start. Um, nothing we could have really done differently. Uh, he does not look like he's going to have another basic and a double colorless. Oh, but he has the Sycamore, so he could have it now. There's the basic. There's a lightning energy, not a double colorless, so he's not going to be able to knock us out this turn. Uh, he can't do things like Max Elixir either. Uh, he grabs a timer ball. Um, probably going to try to grab another Raichu as, another, as a backup. He flips two heads. There's a Pikachu, a Raichu, and a Raichu Break. Now, I don't even know what Raichu Break does, because I've never seen that card ever seen play. Uh, he can't evolve this turn. Uh, we draw a VS Seeker, which does us nothing. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and Lysander out one of these Abstrikas. Play down our Parallel City so it limits his bench. And pass off to him. We need to draw a basic or a draw supporter quickly. Without that, we are kind of screwed. Um, he evolves into Raichu and Raichu Break. Now let's take a look at Raichu Break and see what this card does. Well, I tip my head sideways to read this card. Grant Bolt, 170 damage, discarded all energy cards attached to this Pokemon. Okay. So 170 damage against. Okay, thank God he played an N. So the end really gonna help us out here. Hopefully we hit a Dark Cry or something else to uh, start going off here. Uh, we hit an Ultra Ball and a Shaman, which are both really helpful. He's gonna drop down the Sky Field here and start trying to go off here. We do have another copy of Parallel City as well as Field Blower still in our deck, so we can uh, counter this Stadium very nicely. Um, this is definitely gonna be a grinder of a game though, because it does not look like he plays any EXs or GXs, so we're gonna take six knockouts. And um, we're probably going to have to end up parallel sitting ourselves to not let him take easy knockouts on the Shamans. Um, so the maximum damage that he can do is 20, 40. Let's see. He, Raichu does 20 damage, right? So he can do 160, one, yeah, 160, 190 is the maximum amount of damage he can do with a Raichu with a Choice Band. So we are going to discard a Sycamore and a Dark Energy. Uh, we have all of our Dark Rides available to us. Our Tapu Lele is priced, which is not a huge deal. Um, we have our Hoopa. So we have one Tapu Lele prize. We have Tapu Lele, one Max Elixir, one Trainer's Mail. Our, oh, oh, we don't we won't put one Parallel City in our deck this deck, that's right. Um, our Hex Maniac is prized. And there, it looks like two Dark Energies are prizes. Okay, um, that kind of sucks, but we can work around this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab a Hoopa. 
we are going to play the Hoopa and grab ourselves three Dark Cries to start charging them up. Um, we need to find a way to get this Shaman out of the act. We have a way out of the active with the Shaman. We are going to attach a Dark Energy to a Dark Cry and then set up for four. Hopefully, we draw into a Max Elixir. We do not. We do hit the Max Elixir. We do not hit the. We do not hit the energy off of the Elixir. Uh, we are going to Fuel Blower off his Stadium because I do not want him swinging for a lot of damage out of the gate. And we are just going to go ahead and drop our Dark Cry into the active and pass. Um, we cannot BS Seeker for a Sycamore yet. Um, we need every single energy available to us. We've already lost two into our prize, so that really doesn't lower our damage output. Unfortunately, we only need four energy on board to really knock out anything he has, he has on his bench, with the exception of Raichu Break. He is going to Wally into a, a Zeb Striker. And I don't think he can really do anything else. I guess he's not playing double Carless. And, okay, he scoops for some reason. Um, I don't know why he scooped. I feel like he was in pretty good control there of what we were doing. Um, I definitely think that that guy should have been playing four copies of Dollar Cars instead of basic lightning energy um, and, and dropped the right tree break and played choice bands. I think that would have been an overall better deck for him. Uh, he could also play things like evolutions to uh, hit weakness on popular decks like Volcania and um, Sidulai. Uh, we were playing against a Grass Colors deck, so this is probably a uh, Decidui Lock. Um, or maybe, yeah, Decidui Lock. There's nothing else this could be. Grass and Colors, this is a Decidui Lock. Or some other kind of weird deck. Maybe Golly Spud? Okay, so we do start off with a Dark Cry, and we have an Ultra Ball in hand to grab ourselves our Hoopa. Hopefully, does not prize. Since we are going first, if this is the Sidui lock, uh, we are going to be grabbing everything we can and playing as much cards as we can to get rolling. Um, unfortunately, he uh, loves eight Pokemon at high HP, so we'll be trying the two shot instead of one shot. A Ranguru, that's interesting. So we're going to go ahead here and we are going to discard an Ultra Ball and discard a N and a Sycamore because we have a VS Seeker in hand. We do have access to Hoopa. One Dark Cry is probably not bad. One Veltal. Um, one Sound Lab. Um, one Sycamore. Yeah, one Sycamore. One Choice Band. And something else. What is missing from here? Oh, two Dark Cries are prized. Two Dark Cries are prized. We play four. That's right. So, two Dark Cries are prized. Wait, no. One Dark Cries prize. Okay, I can't figure out our, our fifth prize is, guys. I'm sorry. So, we're going to go ahead here and grab three EXs. We're going to grab our two other Dark Cries and our Shaman. Pretty standard start here. Um, now, the question is, do I attach to the active Dark Cry? Uh, he's playing a Ranguru, so he's probably playing a little bit slower deck. We're going to go ahead and see if we hit this Elixir. We do. And then we're going to drop it on here. Uh, we we know we have all of our switch cards available to us, so playing a Shaman here for four is not a bad idea. We probably will hit a switch card for next turn or this turn. Uh, we hit a Trainer's Mail, which does work. And we find the Escape Rope. And now we can Escape Rope our Dark Cry into the active with the energy on it. Uh, do we want an Ultra Ball for anything? Uh, this could be Decidui with a Ranguru, so I think maybe we do want to um, discard a VS Seeker um, if this is not a if this is not a Decidui Plume. This move is slightly worse, but overall, I think um, actually no. Let's go ahead and grab a, that Hex Maniac now and just play preemptively. This is going to shut him off from drawing cards things with Shaman and Hoopa and other things, whatever he can do. This is going to slow him down a lot. And we're just going to play it preemptively and use it next turn. Um, if he has, if he gets everything out, which is very hard to do if he's not um, going to be able to play Shaman, uh, we should be in good shape here. Yeah. 
God, I feel like I'm talking all day. So he plays the Lysander and pulls out our Hoopa. He's going to Ultra Ball out a Decidueye. Um, he may have the Force of Giant Plants in hand. Okay, he just scoops. That Hexmaniac just screwed him over, I think. I should have clicked on his deck. I kind of want to know what he's playing. Alright, let's see if we can get someone who's not going to scoop on us after we get set up. Uh, Turbo Dark is not an impossible deck to beat either. Um, it struggles against things like Quad Lapras very badly because of how much energy denial that deck plays. Uh, the new Sylveon deck could hurt it drastically. If you guys want to have some tech cards in here, to, tech cards in your own decks to beat uh, Turbo Dark, think things like Team Flare Grunt, Crushing Hammers, and Enhanced Hammers. Actually, Enhanced Hammers only beats the, the uh, Dark Cry Dragons deck, but it also, um, um, if they're playing Evelta, they're play also playing Double Colors Energy. Um, things like Team Skullgrunt really hurt Turbo Dark because they're holding any amount of energy in their hand. It's going to hurt them. Um, Turbo Dark loses to pretty hard to a lot of control style decks. Uh, we do hit Eveltal, which is awesome, I guess. Uh, we're, we are not going to play down anything else. And let's see what he's going to flip over. Looks like he is playing some kind of dark, of uh, some kind of, he's playing a Turbo Dark Eveltal variation, looks like. So we're going to go ahead and grab... One, oh, I didn't look at all the prizes, damn it. Well, we know two of our dark cards are prized. So we only had two available to us. That's why I had to grab the Shaman. Let's go ahead and drop these energies down. Max Elixir. Hit the Elixir. Drop down an energy. Drop this down. Play the Trainer's Mail. Um, we're going to Hex Maniac. We're, we're going to play Silent Lab. Um, I think grabbing a Switch is better overall. Then grabbing a. I don't need to get greedy here, so let's just go ahead and switch into the Dark Cry. And let's drop in one Shaman, draw three. Uh, there we go, get the Enhanced Hammer. Um, we don't want to play Sycamore. Let's just play Hex Maniac, that way he can't bump the stadium and um, get around the um, ability. This Hex Maniac will really slow him down, won't let him play Shamans, won't let him play Hoopas. Uh, but it looks like he's not playing either one of those if he's playing Nest Ball. He grabs a baby Eveltal. Uh, he is going to attach energy manually and Sycamore. Uh, let's see what he discarded. Discard two VS Seekers and two Dark Energies. So, okay, so he is also playing a uh, Max Elixir, which is pretty bad. I mean, not Max Elixir, uh, EXP Share. Ooh, he misses one Elixir. Will we miss two? Highly doubt it. This is two max elixirs. Oh my god. Bruh. You've been playing so fast, I know you're not looking at your prizes, so are a lot of your dark energies prized? He's gonna grab another nest ball here, so he's maybe playing some kind of budget turbo dark. Um, let's see here. So I guess he's not playing Shannon, so I guess the Silent Live is slightly worse now. Um, we could Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele. Um, I think that's not the greatest idea here. Um, we kind of got the most explosive start we could ask for here. I really do want to draw more cards though, so maybe we just... Um, oh, what do we do here? So he has to manually attach energy to his Dark Cry to attack. I think we just play down the silent lab and make him bump it. And then we just start swinging. And let's see what he does going forward here. Uh, so this uh, cuts off his shaman and his hoopas. If he's not gonna play shaman or hoopa or any or tapu lele, uh, we can bump it with our own stadium or with a field blower. Uh, field blower would be more ideal because we can bump those EXP shares. He's gonna dark pulse us for 60. Um, I really want to hold this enhanced hammer though. Uh, we are going to drop energy here. I think we're just going to have to sycamore away the shaman because our hand's kind of dead, dead right now. 
We do get a parallel city. This parallel city accomplish anything. He just discards that evil on, on the bench. Um, well, we can ultra ball for top of Lele, which I don't think is really necessary. Uh, via, we can't VS Seeker for anything because we already played our Sycamore this turn. Top of Lele doesn't accomplish anything. We need to draw more cards overall. We need more energy on the board. Um, we have Olympia available to us next turn. No, we do not. Uh, we could top of Lele for an Olympia next turn. Then attach energy to their Dark Ride and then Tapu Lele into a Olympia, switch out, and then and then knock out this Dark Ride without being in danger of being knocked out ourselves. Uh, we can team Flare Grunt to um, also uh, deny another energy off and make him choose the Velta or the Dark Ride. But that's not going to matter now because he just played N. We do grab the Tapu Lele. We do have a Choice Band as well. Um, overall, we do have a lot of options available to us. Uh, we could Lysander. Um, but I think let's change mail first here. Uh, we do not get the Olympia, but we do get the Max Lecture. Uh, we cannot play Tapu Lele because we are still under our own silent lab block. We do hit an energy, so let's go ahead and drop one here. Let's go ahead and drop energy onto this baby Veltal. Um, we can't switch out yet. Um, hmm. I don't want to put a choice band onto this dark cry. Um, let's go ahead and end, end real quick and see if we can draw to an escape rope or a switch. We do not draw either one. Um, but we can just knock out this dark cry though. He's going to get in preserve his energy on the board. Um, we need to grab a field blower really quick to get rid of those, to get rid of those EXP shares in our own stadium. So he's moving those energies around his board. Uh, we get our next dark card and our field blower. Okay, so we're in good shape now. If he doesn't end us, we're in good shape. Um, how many ends has he played now? He's played one end and two VS Seekers, so we're fine. And there's the other end. Uh, so really, what we just need to hit the field blower, our parallel city. Um, team Flare Ground would not even be horrible either. We do hit the ultra. We do hit a max elixir and a trainer's mail. He's gonna super ride back in those energies. Looks like he does. So now most of his max elixirs are probably gonna get a hit. He does dark pulse us for a good chunk of damage. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drop a dark cry here. We are going to trainer's mail real quick here. Uh, now this cards really do us anything. We do have another dark card in our deck though, I know that much. Um I don't want to do that though. Because I want to be a seeker and grab an N or something. Um so let's go ahead and just um Let's hold, let's hold, let's not even grab, let's not even play anything from our hand first. Let's just go ahead and end straight out the gate. All these cards that we would end up um, playing would be pointless and be a waste of resources. Um, our Shaman is in our discard pile, but we do have Top of Lele available to us next turn. Um, let's go ahead and parallel, actually, yeah, we're going to parallel it this way. And then we can just Dark Pulse here for a good chunk of damage. Letting us two shot. He is going to be doing uh, 100 damage though with his uh, now possibly 120. Um, based off his build of what we've seen in his deck so far, it does not look like he's playing double carless energies. So he's going to be hitting for 120 now. He still has a manual attachment available to him. Um. He's going to play that Sycamore down. Looks like he discarded two Lysanders and an Ultra Ball. Is that right? Yep, two Lysanders and an Ultra Ball. He does have a Switch, though, available to him. Um, I don't know why he did that. 140 damage. Um, let's see, let's change mail here. Let's see if we can hit anything useful. Um... That Lysander is good. That Lysander is very good. 
Uh, we can Ultra Ball next turn, or we can go ahead and Escape Rope and start tar tar I think we should Lysander out this Darkrai and just take the free knockout. Get our next two prizes here. Overall, he's in a lot better shape than we are in because he has that Evil Ball uh, Eveltal ready to go. Um, we can't put the Baby Volcano out to force him to play a 7-price card game with us. Uh, he is going to be taking the knockout, though, on the Ardark Cry right now. So we're going to go ahead and put out Baby Eveltal. And then we are going to Ultra Ball. We're going to discard our Escape Rope and our N. Uh, is there any justification to grabbing Tapu Lele? Not really. So let's just go ahead and grab a Dark right here. Uh, we could use um, Baby Veltal here to grab ourselves a... Um, putting the Choice Man to Baby Veltal do 60 damage actually is actually a good idea, I feel like. We're going to VS Seeker, though, for an N. No. Uh, we're actually we're going to play the N because it's going to drop him down to two cards and limit his options. Uh, while not really doing anything for us. And then we're just going to go ahead and Oblivion Wing here for 60 damage. Um, definitely puts him closer to knockout range. Um, he could retreat though, but um, he plays down a Fighting Fury Belt. Our field blower just got all of a sudden a lot better. He's going to be doing a lot of damage though and taking out his Eveltal right now. We are going to have a hard time. I don't think we can win this game actually. Um, we would we don't have we don't play anything at the special conditions. He has way too much energy in that Eveltal that we could not get rid of. I guess though, I guess playing top of Lele probably would have been a better idea to um, force that energy out of him. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'll stick more here. Play it out. See what we get here. We get the field blower. We can discard this and this. Um, we're only going to be doing 60 damage here. Um, yeah, so well played. Um, in hindsight, we kind of got screwed over by our own stadium there with the center lab. Um, we should have been using top of to grab things like fighting wait what oh we win do we win here wait a minute could he have knocked us out with this 20 40 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 okay so no he could not have knocked us out oh well played well, i thought we lost there i thought he was going to be able to pull off some shenanigans and win right there but apparently not i can't math um Generally, I don't try. I try, generally don't scoop unless like I have like the absolutely worst possible start. Like for example, a worst possible start in this deck would have probably been pricing three Dark Rays, which does not happen often, but it can. Uh, he looks like he is playing Vespaquin probably, or um, no, he's not playing Vespaquin. He's playing um, probably Decidueye Walls. Um, but we do have like things like Escape Rope and Lysander. To get around that, uh, we start with the shaman, which is absolutely horrible, and not anything really to get rid of around this shaman's hurt. So this is definitely a decision by Walls deck. There's his force of giant plants. He's got the energy on the Lugia. Um, but he kind of looks like he has a bad start himself. We're going to go ahead and play down this parallel city here. Unfortunately, we're going to have the Sycamore away, our two choice bands. There's no point in playing on the Shaman, really. We don't play double colors, so we have no way of getting it out. But we can go ahead and do this. Um, we get an Ultra Ball here. We're going to discard a Sycamore and an N. I don't want to play N really ever. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a Hoopa. And just try to get ourselves as set up as fast as possible. We're going to hold that Hex Maniac though for the... Um, uh, I think we do need to grab a 
Shaman though. Draw those two extra cards. We are not going to discard the Hex Maniac because we need that Hex Maniac to um, prevent him in case we do get under item lock next turn. Um, he probably will play an end though. Although he did not play supporter last turn. And we're just going to pass off to him. We did not hit a Max Elixir or an Energy of any kind. Uh, we only discard one Max Elixir though. So, the worst thing he can do, if he Sycamores or ends here, we're kind of in trouble. Um, he hit, he has a Trainer's Mail though. Hits a Sycamore. He's, he's definitely going to play that. His hand's definitely dead, the way he's been playing. Let's see what he gets rid of here. What the hell? Oh, he got rid of a VS Seeker and a Vile Plume and a Rainbow Energy. Um, I think we leave down the um, Parallel City here. Um, there's really no point in us grabbing anything else. Um. Shoot. We're in a bad spot here because we haven't drawn any energy. Um, if we hex, it does nothing really. He can't play down a shaman unless he bumps our parallel city. Um, there's no other supporter we really want to grab. We don't want to end. We don't want to stick more. We need to control the stadium units. We need all these stadiums. We can't even grab another shaman. I think we just pass. Um, this is a definitely an awful piece of bricking here on our part. He does hit the energy on the Jolteon though. He can retreat it out if he wants to discard the double colors off of his Lugia and he hits us with an N. We do have the escape rope though available to us. We are probably going to have to hold that. Plays down a bunch of Decidueyes, grabs the Shaman. Um, now his bench is full, so we don't have to fear the item lock as much. I'm more afraid of the Jolteon now than I am afraid of the block. Uh, like an Ultra Ball for another Decidueye, it looks like. So the stadium game has been lost. He is set up. But we can discard the Float Stone in order to um, maybe Lysander stall out his Decidueye. Now he's definitely gonna take the knockout. No. Well, he only needs to hit. No, he needed both feather arrows, feather arrows on the shaman to take the easy prize. Um. So we do have something available. Let's go ahead and field blower off his stadium and his tool card. Oh, let's go ahead and trainer's mail here. We do hit an elixir. Um, if we hit this elixir though, we're in really good shape. We need to hit this elixir though. We do. Go ahead and bump it on a dark cry. We're gonna play down this um, my escape rope. Oh, it doesn't matter what he pulls out really. Um, we could just leave that like as it is. want to be a seeker for anything. There's some just, oh, we can't even grab Hex, Hex set back in our deck. Um, do I want to get a knockout here, or do I want to slowly pick away at the Decidueye? I think I want to slowly pick away at this Decidueye. Um, I would go for the Shaman, but I want, the Decidueye has a higher retreat cost than Shaman. So it would make him waste a double Carlos energy on the on the Decidueye to get it out of the active. Um, and if he's not playing lock, he could be playing some kind of a um, switching card though. So that's something we need to watch out for. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and just feather arrow though. Looks like um, Olympia is all of a sudden a lot more appealing now if we can get more energy onto our Dark Rise. Um, losing our escape rope though is pretty bad. He's gonna go ahead and be a seeker for a sycamore. Um, 
level ball for a dart tricks. He's trying to get that third decentralized set up quickly. Um, we need to draw max elixirs, dark energies, all everything to um, have a chance here. He is going to sick more though. Oh wow, he is digging pretty hard. He's dug through most of his deck. Uh, he misses the trainers now though. There's the double Carlos. So he's gonna retreat into the Jolteon. Um, we have to escape rope out of this now. Actually, well, that's not a mistake really. We can still hit a switch card. Let's go ahead and be a seeker here for a Sycamore. Um, it is gonna be, I don't think he's going to be playing very much draw supporters anymore. We do hit a Dark Energy. Uh, he's taking the knockout on the Shaman next turn. The Silent Lab doesn't really do us anything. Let's go ahead and Trainer's Mail. We miss the Trainer's Mail. Let me drop this down though here. Um, the team flare ground for next turn is really good. Uh, Sound Lab is not going to do anything in this matchup now. We can just discard that eventually. He's going to play another trainer's mail. Hits a float stone. Which is really bad for us. Because we don't have another field blower. And he's just going to keep hitting us with this jolty. So we can't get around this Jolteon right now, so let's just go ahead and pop off his double colorless energy, make him have to hit that double colorless. Um, drop energy onto here. No point in playing the Silent Lab, yet at least. He's gonna Feather Arrow. How many double colorless does he use? I think he's only used two so far. Oh no, all his double cars are gone now, so he has to retreat the Jolteon into a... That works too. He's just gonna arrow ball us for knockout. Um, I'm kinda hesitant now to attack this with the Jolteon available to him. We don't have enough dark energy on the board, really. Um, we're gonna drop this energy here. Now, do we want to Sycamore or do we want to end? I think we want to end because it'll make him have less cards in his hand. He still has to hit a lot of um, cards to get us down. Uh, we do hit a baby Veltal, which is helpful. We're gonna go ahead and max lecture onto the baby Veltal. Um, we already played a supporter, so we can't even grab the hex. We can hit 120 pretty easily. Uh, he's going to be hitting us back though for 80, which is not quite enough. Um, really losing those choice bands really hurts us now. Plays another Sycamore. He probably, he, I don't know what he's digging for. He has to retreat out of the Lugia into a... Uh, Oh, he needs the rainbow energy to hollow hunt. That's what he needs. There's two, three. He has one left in the deck. Um, he is going to take the knockout, though, here on our dark cry, which really does suck here. Uh, we will be hitting him for 80. We can hit him for 100, though, next turn. All of a sudden, end just came really good. Now he's down to little price cards again. Unfortunately, though, we are going to have to put out this damaged dark cry. Um, let's go ahead and drop energy here. We're going to VS Seeker now for a Hex Maniac. Oh, that's in our deck. Shit. Um, team Flare Grunt works too, though. Um, we want to end or do we want Team Flare Grunt? Um, if we end, we put them down to two cards. If we 
Team Flare Grunt, we take away his ability to... It uh, doesn't matter because we're going to knock it out anyway, so let's just go ahead and play. I thought we had X-Maniac still available to us, but we don't. Um, we do get the Enhanced Hammer, though. Uh, we can go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and take away that, that rainbow energy off of that Jolteon. That way it's no longer a threat to us. And just Dark Pulse him for 100. Taking the knockout. And taking our first two prize cards. Now we, I think one of our Dark Cries is prized. Um, he has to hit now a... He just put the Jolteon out because it has free retreat. Um, but, um, he has one DCE and one, um, Rainbow Energy left. They may be prized, they may be in his deck. I'm not sure which, but he's gonna... Oh, he wins. Well played, bro. I forgot. Well played. The Sage Y takes that cheesy knockout. We really needed... We really needed Hex Maniac available to us, though, in order to prevent that. Um, not much we could have done there against that. Um, but overall, guys, that's been Turbo Dark Cry Post Guardians. Losing those EXP shares, as you guys can see, really hurt. There's a lot of times where if we had EXP shares down, we could have conserved energy. But we're trying to play around Fuel Blower here. Um, because Fuel Blower is definitely in a competitive scene. Fuel Blower is going to be a one or two of in most decks. Possibly, I think, mostly a two of, just because uh, it really just, it really hurts Mega decks and push them, pushes them out of relevance. Um, with the exception of Mega Ray, because they can evolve into the first turn. Um, it also is a, one of the very few ways we have of discarding stadiums. The only other card that lets you discard stadiums, really, is uh, Delinquent, and also Mega Scizor, or Scizor, can't remember which one does it. And then also, of course, playing your own stadium. But um, losing those um, ESP shares really hurt. Also, the losing the Fighting Fury Belts. Um, really hurts too because it takes away a lot of your durability um, If I were to make any changes to this deck overall, I don't know what I would change I think um, it would just depend. I would have to do a lot of individual testing against things like Volcani and Lapras Decidueye um, The mirror match um, I think I would just have to do a lot of testing to see what um, is good against this deck and overall what uh, this deck struggles against but until next time, guys, this has been Bonzi Chun here with another Pokemon trading card game online video for y'all. For our Road to Seattle series, this has been Turbo Dark Post Guardians Rising. Until next time, peace out. Check you guys later. I didn't play, a whole, I didn't play the XY video game or was not around for a lot of X and Y trading card game. So I forget the names of like.